So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make an organic composite structure using 3ds Max and different modifiers on a plane. So let's start by going to our Create tab. Um, under Geometry, Standard Primitives, we can select Plane. And just draw a plane. And I'm going to make mine 20 feet by 20 feet. And then I'm going to stick with seven segments and seven width segments for the length and width. You want to choose not too many segments um, on your edge faces, but you want to use enough that it actually will show the deformation. If you choose too many, though, it'll be more complex and it'll be difficult to work with as you go through the process. So that seems like a good balance. Also, up in the upper left corner, you want to make sure that your edged faces are turned on so that you can see the subdivision on the surface. The other thing I'm going to do is turn off the grid just so it's not so confusing. So the shortcut for that is G, which is also located um, under here, Show Grids, just so it's easier to see here. If you don't like the color of your default plane, by the way, you can go to your Modify tab, select this little window, and then change that. So if you prefer a different preview color, you can change that. Once you add a material, it will override that anyway, but just for the modeling, um, it might be nice to change that color. All right, so let's go ahead and add some modifiers. I'm going to start with a noise modifier. And by the way, when you um, select from the modifier list these modifiers, you can actually start typing. You can see that the what you start typing pops up first. So it's just a little quicker shortcut to get to the modifiers you want to use. Um, so this is the noise modifier. If I go down here, I can adjust the strength. I'm going to change the Z value just to give it a little vertical dimension. And then we're going to turn on fractal, which will just make it a little more dynamic. So the goal of this first part is to create a seed to which, for which, from which to generate that geometry. So we want to create something that's volumetric, not too complex, but does have some like spatial interest, um, interesting spatial features to it. So we're going to um, next add a wave modifier. Oops, if you accidentally um, add the wrong modifier, by the way, you can right click on it and delete it. And so let me try that again. Wave There it is. And we're going to add a little bit of amplitude, which is the Z dimension there, just to make it a little, little more dynamic. And then you could try to change the wavelength if you want. That's the distance between the wave crests. Uh, but that looks pretty good to me. And then now I'm going to add a bend modifier. And I'm going to bend that in the X direction. And by the way, just to make these a little more interesting, all of these modifiers, if you um, select the plus next to the modifier name, it opens up the sub objects of that modifier. So you can select the gizmo, for example, and just move the gizmo, and that'll change how the modifier is affecting the form. So that's pretty nice because you can use your move tool, you could use your rotate, and you can actually rotate that gizmo to create some really interesting new effects. Once you're done using uh, the sub-objects, you want to select out of that, and then you can just close it. Otherwise, sometimes if you're in a sub-object and you add another modifier, it tries to apply the modifier to the sub-object, which can get a little dicey. So just try to get out of that, make a habit of getting out of it. And then we're going to go ahead now and add a symmetry modifier. Symmetry. And let's see what we can do with this. So with the symmetry modifier, the nice thing here is that you have a mirror. So you can use your move, your rotate, and scale tool up here and actually adjust um, the seam and the mirror that it's creating that symmetry along. So you can use um, the X, the Y, and then you can move it in the Y, or you can move the Z. And the other thing you can do is flip the mirror so that it goes in the opposite direction. So that can be kind of nice as well. So this looks pretty good. Maybe I'll stick with the Z. The other thing you want to do is when you're uh, moving this mirror, you want to kind of avoid like really tiny, weird moments, like like kind of these sort of conditions. So try to get a really nice seam along here. Sometimes you get some odd triangulation. Like that's not ideal, but that's okay. Um, so maybe I'll go a little lower, just clean up that moment. And then those disconnect, which is fine. So that looks pretty good. And then the next thing you want to do is, and be careful with that, because you want to really have nice seams. It'll produce a much better geometry in the end. So then once you're done with that, you can click out. Um, and then let's add an Edit Poly modifier. And the Edit Poly modifier will give you access to all the sub-objects of this form. 
Um, so right now we're going to look at the vertices and when you use symmetry sometimes it leaves these kind of weird vertices that are only connected to two um, edges. You really want vertices like these that are connected to four edges. So what I'm going to do is go through here and click all of these and then delete them but don't hit the button delete you actually have to hit remove over here and that will remove them from the form. The other thing to be careful is don't drag your cursor over them because you'll likely select vertices that are behind and then accidentally delete something that you didn't mean to delete. So when you're doing this just make sure you click only on the vertice that you want to remove and you can hold down control and you can select multiple vertices. So all of these kind of floating ones I'm going to go through here and remove. Um, this will just make the smoothing of the geometry much better later. It won't produce any weird effects. So just go ahead and clean that up. And I would do this actually after every symmetry modifier. The only thing to keep in mind is if you do this, you're changing the topology of the form, so you can't really go back and change these earlier settings, or it will affect, you know, it'll change um, which vertices you're deleting. So you kind of want to be happy with this and then delete these vertices and then move on and not, not go back in time either. So I'll click these last ones here and that looks like yeah, that looks like all of them and then I'll hit remove just to make sure that looks pretty good. Everything looks good in there. Okay, so now we have this form, and you might just want to test a turbo smooth modifier just to see kind of what the smoothing's looking like. So turbo smooth. Oops, I did it again. Let's do that again. Turbo smooth modifier. And don't ever increase this over three. For now, I'm just going to leave it at two. But if you go over three, you'll most likely crash your computer. So that's a good little spatial uh, kind of seed that we'll use to generate the rest of this form. So now what we can do is just turn that off, go back to our edit poly. I'll go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and add another symmetry modifier. And every time I add one of these, I'm just going to test, just to get a sense of like what the possibilities are, I'm going to go ahead and test like both axes, so I'm going to test the X in both directions. It's producing some interesting ladder kind of features. Uh, I'm going to try the Y direction. Also, while you're doing this, make sure your snaps are turned off. Otherwise, it's going to try to snap around, and it's a little, um, little harder to move this this mirror. That's a little nicer because then you get the same thing you got in the X, but you also get this larger volume in the middle. So I'm liking the way that's looking. And then let's try Z. Z's not bad either, so let me see if I flip that seam, what I get. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, but I think I like that uh, Y, so I'm going to go with the Y in this case. Something, uh, you know, a little bit like like that. Actually, maybe I'll keep that bigger. Oh yeah, let me flip the seam there. Yeah, something like that's nice. I get a little kind of pocket that opens up there. I don't know what that'll be, but that's interesting. So it might produce some nice results. So that looks pretty good to me. So once again, um, get out of the symmetry modifier, add an edit poly modifier. Um, and then let's just look at that, that seam again. Make sure we don't have any weird floating vertices. That one actually looks pretty good. So I don't think I need to delete anything on that one, which is nice. Okay, again, I'll just test this turbo smooth. That's looking pretty nice. Um, by the way, if you ever get kind of lost, like the orbit of your um, scene isn't working very well, just always hit, if you have an object selected and hit Z, that'll kind of recenter it so you can um, orbit around it really nicely. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's go back to our edit poly. And here's what I mean you have to get out of this edit poly, it's just good habit. So I'll click out of that. And I'll go ahead and close, and I can just close these other ones as well. And now let's add another symmetry modifier. And let's see what we've got here. So we're getting some nice uh, matrix kind of thing uh, space there. Let's see what we get in the X direction. Yeah, that's nice. So that's producing some nice interior geometry. I like the direction. It's like a crisscross direction of different spaces, which could be pretty interesting. Um, so maybe I'll go with something like this. 
Um, the other thing you could do is instead, I'm just moving the mirror now, but you can actually use your rotate tool and start to rotate this mirror to produce some asymmetries or, or just more complex symmetries. So maybe I'll rotate it in like two directions. That'll produce a nice um, difference within the form itself. Okay, so just in uh, just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to add an edit poly modifier. And I'm going to try to fix the seam of that latest symmetry, so I'm going to pause this when I'm done fixing that. Okay, so I fixed the seam. I actually had very few vertices there that were causing problems, so that's nice. Um, and now I want to add a little more variation to this form. So instead of just more symmetries, um, I'm going to get uh, out of the sub-object level there. And I'm going to add an FFD box modifier. FFD box. And if I open this up, you'll see down here in the parameters, there's this option to set number of points. And what this will allow me to do is change the number of points that are controlling the form of this geometry. So if I hit set number of points and I change this to like 2 by 3 by 3, okay, you can see it then has um, two points in one direction, three points in, so two points in this direction, 1, 2, three points in this direction, 1, 2, 3, and three points in this direction, 1, 2, 3. And so now if I go over to the modifier, I can open it up and select control points, select a point and then move it and this will allow me to kind of stretch and pull the geometry into a form that I'm trying to achieve. So you might actually do this every once in a while um, just to help manipulate it into a more controlled um, or more targeted geometry that you're trying to achieve. Just make sure you're avoiding overlapping faces so you know if you stretch this or push this too far you get faces that start to encroach on each other and it's going to provide problems later so don't be a little careful with this it's good to kind of manipulate it into a form as you go with each symmetry so once you're happy with that you can close it and now I'll add another symmetry modifier and I'll just start to change this plane let's try this one in the Z to see what we get That looks pretty good, although I'm starting to lose some of the structural elements. So I want to make sure I keep those. So maybe I'll actually rotate this just a little bit. That's interesting. Okay. And then I would fix the seam again on this one. So I'll go ahead and add an edit poly and then pause this. Okay, I've now fixed the seam. Um, the next thing I want to do is add another edit poly and look at some other options for adding some difference inside of the symmetry. It's good to have a symmetrical structure because structures want to be symmetrical. They want to distribute forces evenly. But sometimes you do want to add some asymmetry into that structure to accommodate difference um, within the context or to achieve different results with the overall geometry. So what I'll do is open up this edit poly and um, it's good that I use so few polygons in the earlier plane because if I had too many polygons this wouldn't work as well um, and what I want to do now is make some bigger moves um, just by using some edit polygon tools that I have at my disposal so if you open up up here your graphite modeling tools there's a ton of different tools you can use and I'm not going to get into these but you can try some of these out so you can you know you can loop polygons you can do a ring which will select whole regions of the polygons if you go to selection you could select like all the concave polygons or all the convex polygons you can select any non quads or any open um, edges so that's all the edges at the exterior so there's all these different ways in which to select polygons but I'm going to go ahead and close that and I'll just use the native features kind of over here in my modifier or in my command panel so I just want to select let's just go ahead and select some um, polygon and then if I look over here in the polygon sub object in my edit polygons um, I can actually bevel this and start generating these additional structures off of the symmetrical geometry so if I select the settings box always select the settings box next to the tool not the tool itself um, and that'll give you access to the different settings so then I can bevel this thing I can extrude it out I can bevel it and I can start to make these kind of appendages and then when you're done hit the checkbox so you'll see now when I do turbo smooth you know I'm adding this kind of asymmetrical element to the piece so if I go back here I could really start to manipulate this I could 
um, do another bevel off this side and I could bevel it a little more say OK and then the other thing you could do you can see that that intersected the geometry so I can actually select this polygon kind of move that leg out so it no longer intersects and then once you start getting these um, secondary branching structures off the form you can start connecting it back to itself so for example I could take that polygon and this polygon hold down control to select both of them and then over here on the right hit this bridge um, tool and it'll create a new polygon between those two which then gives you the option to add additional edge segments so I'm just going to add one in this case and then when you're done you can hit the checkbox and then when you're done with all this get out of the tool out of the sub objects and then turn on your turbo smooth and you can see I then generated the secondary structure that's asymmetrical so it's not part of the rest of the structure it's this kind of new appendage but it's still because I have so few polygons to begin with um, it's a big move so it still feels like integral into the overall geometry if these were if I were operating on tiny polygons it would feel more like an ornament or a surface effect this actually feels like part of the geometry okay so now maybe I will go back to this edit poly level add uh, another symmetry and sometimes you know you do like 10 symmetries and then you realize that actually this is what you want so you erase half of the geometry half of the work you've done but if you you know if you open up this uh, mirror it could be that actually all you want is that so you did all that work but you got to here but this is really great so don't feel like you always need to include all of the geometry and everything you do it really just depends on what what it's uh, what you're generating and what it's becoming so I'll go ahead and do that. I've got some good structural, good vertical structural elements here. Um, and then maybe I'll add one more symmetry modifier um, that's vertical. So on the Z, uh, let me open that up. And I'm going to flip this mirror. So it's going to be this way. And so now I've got some really good vertical elements. Um, that's starting to feel like a pretty good structure. Um, the one thing I might do is add an overall modifier to this. So I might go ahead and add a bend modifier. And I might bend it in the Y axis. Kind of bend it around itself a little bit. It's doing something a little funky there where it's it's like taking the whole geometry. So what you can do is open up the bend geometry, uh, move this over, and actually rotate that gizmo and let me go to the top view so I can see this a little better you know, maybe I want it to be more like that and then I can rotate this and then you can increase that amount if you want to rotate around like that and then let's add a turbo smooth and see what we get so something like that. One thing I would recommend, this is a structure, so you want it to be, you want to have some thickness. So before the turbo smooth, if you just go in here and add a shell, that'll add a little thickness to the form, which will smooth these edges and make that really nice and organic. So uh, maybe I'll add like two inches in the outer amount and then two inches in the inner amount. Turn on my turbo smooth, and you can see it then adds like a nice thickness to the project so that all these kind of what were just surfaces are actually becoming structural members and you can you can change that amount to whatever works with what you're doing so if I want to make it a little thicker I can make it a little thicker so that's how you make an organic geometry using some of these modifiers the other thing you might do is if you want to like slice parts of these you might add um, after the turbo smooth you might add a slice modifier and then you can open up the slice modifier to the slice plane and move that around and like remove parts of the geometry so maybe I'll remove the bottom and that'll give me a nice base for my building you can kind of put that wherever you want it and then the other thing is you know if you get these kind of weird moments here that are little outliers you can add another edit poly onto the form open it up select element and then select these little things and delete them so they're no longer part of the project. I turn off my edge faces and if you want to see a nice way to preview these is to, if you go to the display and hit shaded and go to clay, clay is kind of a nice way to see like shadow and shading.
without actually adding a material.